Uh, but uh, the extraordinary story about uh, a number of aides and even a close protection police officer in Rishi Sunak's uh, team uh, being accused of putting bets on the date of the election just before the election date was actually announced as 4th of July. Well, let's talk about this with Mike Neville. He's a former Metropolitan Police Detective Chief Inspector. Good morning to you, Mike. Oh, Julia. Well, there's lots of new developments this morning. Let's get people up to date with where we are, and then I'll ask you about them individually. But we had this allegation about a week ago that a, 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 a senior Tory Aden candidate had actually put a bet on the election date. And then we discussed £100. He actually admitted it. This is Craig Williams. Um, and then we had the extraordinary situation where another candidate was accused, uh, two Tory aides. Now, the Gambling Commission looking into them, internal inquiries in the Conservative Party as well. We found out that a police officer, his close protection, officer had actually been accused was suspended facing a police investigation because of course his uh, role not supposed to use information you overhear from the person you're protecting uh, to make money but again that is a you know a matter that is we don't even have you know it's just an allegation we don't even have a name yet and um, now it's emerged that some five more Metropolitan Police officers may be implicated in this gambling commission investigation and latest development politically in the last hour or so the Conservative Party has announced that Craig Williams the candidate who who has admitted that he did place a bet, and Laura Saunders, who has not uh, said anything of the sort, she's just been accused, uh, that they have both lost the support of the Conservative Party uh, and will no longer be effectively Conservative candidates. Mike, where do we even start with this? First of all, is it a criminal offence of any kind for police, for an, an aide, a candidate, to, to place a bet with insider information? Well, it's an offence for anybody to cheat at, at gambling under the Gambling Act of 2005. It's an offence to cheat yourself or to enable somebody else to do so, so passing on information to to family or friends. So, And there may also be cases of uh, misuse of, uh, of a public office. I mean, I'm actually, I'm actually sat near Welshpool, which is the constituency where the Tory MP has had his um, support uh, don't withdrawn. name the candidate. I, don't name the constituency, no, no, please. No, no. It's all. It's all in the. It's in the papers today, Julia. This is the report in. The, it's in the uh, newspaper right now. Mm. What's that? That the uh, the uh, that the support has been withdrawn. There's mm. no uh, doubts about that. But the whole thing is just incredible, isn't it? You have on one side people taking advantage of their position. It would it allegedly in the Conservative Party that they've heard this information. And then quite incredibly, it would seem that police officers have done the same. Mm. Uh, and it was, it's was it been said by the Conservative Party that they did and give the Metropolitan Police advance warning of the uh, election uh, time. And of course, what the Gambling Commission does, they have a, uh, they have a duty or people who take bets have a duty to observe any unusual patterns. Yeah. And of course, unusual patterns quickly say, seem to emerge. And most and of these are online to... now, aren't they? So it's much quicker for them to do. But let's go back to you said cheating at gambling. But if you if someone's got information that, you know, they're all oh, that, you know, I've seen that horse is everyone thinks it's injured, but I know it's recovered quickly. Is that is that cheating? Having if someone, you know, if someone goes, I think the elect, you know, I work in number 10. I'm hearing gossip that that we're going to have a 4th of July election, putting a bet on it being 4th of July. That's different, is it not, from insider trading, um, you know, putting a bet on in the mar in the in the stock market or something because and banking because that there are, there's specific crimes related to that but is there a specific crime of having information from your job and using that to put a bet on? No, the the, the definition is cheating, and what but, what the law courts have said, what judges have said in the past is this amounts to have you been dishonest? And dishonest is a quite a nebulous phrase, isn't it? And what it amounts to is, would a reasonable person think that was dishonest or would they know that it was dishonest? That's how right. these cases... Because for me, it seems to be a, an threat. ethical issue, a misjudgment, the idea that you would use that information to make personal gain. It's tacky, it's unethical, it's immoral. But I don't see how, unless there is a specific law, which I believe there isn't, that it's criminal. And the police officers, if they were, if that was proved against them, there would be because they are subject to a specific issue. I'm wondering for a government minister that it would be because they are also bound by the ministerial code. It would, it would be for anybody. If you'd received any insider information from, what, from your job, from your professional role, and then use that to... Uh, to pretend that you were just uh, gambling in the sense of I'm taking a chance on the fact that the election may be on this date, it would be for the jury to decide, have you been 
dishonest. And I would suggest if you do receive information in a prof any professional capacity, mm -hmm. which then gives you a dead cert that you know, for example, the election is definitely on the 4th of July, yeah. and then you go and place money on that, having received that information, then that would, you would be guilty of cheating under the gambling that's, act. That's interesting. In terms of those police officers, I mean, a lot of focus on the uh, on, on the candidates, obviously. And we'll, we'll talk to Tom Slater in a few moments about that. But in terms of the police officers, I, I know a lot of police officers are absolutely horrified. Again, allegations made, investigations, no one has been proven. We need to go through due process. If it were the case that a close protection officer either passes information on to other people or himself um, or herself made made bets in a view to, to make financial gain from information they heard whilst, you know, sitting in a car uh, with the prime minister in that role. I mean, that's an incredible breach, not just of their professional duties, but of, of the trust that, that has to exist between people who are at risk of being, you know, attacked or killed and, and, the, and the person who is employed to protect them. It's beyond belief, isn't it? I was watching a, a TV programme about the detective inspector who guarded Churchill throughout the war. And you think these people knew such information, they, oh. they, they put their lives at risk. And I don't think they would have ever imagined, you know, could I use my position to make money and yeah. what we talked about the other thing it's quite amateurish isn't it it's like a hundred pound bet yeah things like that we were saying it's earlier at least do it for a million a quid you yeah, know if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna do this wicked act then it's so it's not only dishonest it's amateurish it's stupid and it just uh, the trouble is again i was proud to be a scotland yard detective and uh, and what again this is going to massively damage yep. the public's perception yeah and, and if it is more than if it is six officers as the allegation is rather if than even just one. one rotten apple one is too many but if even it, but if it's it, more than it, one then again you're into different territory mike neville great to hear from you thank you so much former metropolitan police detective chief inspector